the week. Now it's time to honor the best of the best, the players that stood out above all the rest. It's the 2012 Gibson's Finest CFL Awards. This is the Canadian Football League. Anything can happen. downtown Toronto. Welcome to the 2012 Gibson's Finest CFL Awards. Canada was well represented prior to the show with the arrival of Calgary Stampeders running back John Cornish, nominated for the Top Canadian and Most Outstanding Player Award. Only two Canadians have ever won the MOP, one of whom was the legendary Russ Jackson, a three-time winner of the award. With the arrival of Commissioner Mark Cohan, the festivities could officially begin. Here are your hosts, Matt Dunnigan and Chris Shaw. Welcome everyone to Toronto and the Gibson's Finest CFL Player Awards. This is Chris Schultz and I'm Matt Dunnigan. And Schultz, what a great night we have in store for everyone. You know, Matty, in football, it's a team sport, but this is the one time we can recognize individual talent, talent stars. And it's that individual player, when you get them all together, that's the reason these teams win. This is fun to recognize the individual. Couldn't agree more, Chris. And tonight, I wanted to say that we've got the CIS awards included for the second year in a row. Ceremonies, and we've got a special edition of the Commissioner's Award. We're going to get into that a little bit later. Jolt you right now. We've got the rookies. We've got Jabbar Westman from BC and Chris Matthews from Winnipeg. Well, first, let's talk about Chris Matthews because I know how he made the team. He's a great practice player. I've had the coaches tell me we couldn't keep him off the game field because he was so good on the practice field, making spectacular plays. All you young players learn how to practice, you can become a starter. Now, Jabbar Weston, okay, he was the second pick in the Canadian college draft, and he has lived up to expectations. Matty, I met him at the West Final. You know what he said? Nice to meet you, sir. Sir, hey, Schultz, you know what that is? That's just good upbringing, you know, and that probably stems from his time at Notre Dame High School right I, here in I, Brampton. I know Ontario. that, but it makes me feel old. Well, yeah, it, well, you could be his grandfather. Oh, man. Yeah, Schultz. You know what, though? He's local. He's from Brampton, which is right over that way, about 15 kilometers. You're right. You're is right. Is it that way? Yeah, I think I'm it is. I'm not sure. I, I took a guess. Right. Schultz, you're from here. I'm not. Oh, that's yeah. right. I think it's that way. I can tell you what, though. These guys have been special all season long. Let's learn more about him from our own Rod Smith. <laughs> One man wrecking crew. The rookie having his best day. Chris Matthews had quite the rookie year for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And it's caught. <laughs> Chris Matthews. Anything can happen. Matthews led all rookie receivers with 1,192 yards. Good enough for sixth in the CFL overall. He led the Bombers with 81 receptions and tied for the team lead with seven touchdowns. It didn't take long for defensive end Jabbar Westerman to show people why the Lions took the former Eastern Michigan standout with the second overall pick in the 2012 CFL Canadian College Draft. Westerman getting better by the week. In his first season, the Brampton, Ontario native had 14 defensive tackles and four sacks. He also forced one fumble while playing in 18 games this season for the Lions. And the CFL Most Outstanding Rookie for the year 2012 is Winnipeg receiver Chris Matthews. You know, sky's the limit. Uh, you know, I, I'm pushing as high as I can to do as much as I can. Hopefully, I want to. Hopefully, I can make the Hall of Fame for here, and and uh, you know that'll make a great deal for me. And you know, you never know. When my kids grow up. Hopefully, I have a boy one day. <laughs> and uh, he'll come up here and play CFL, too. Show you a little gray old line play. Look at the nice feet. Montreal Alouette's offensive lineman Josh Burke is looking to win this award for the second straight season. He helped solidify an offensive line that helped Anthony Calvillo throw for a CFL best 11 300-yard games. Burke is looking to become the first repeat winner since teammate Scott Flory won back-to-back -back awards in 08 and 09. BC Lion offensive lineman Javon Olafioy is the West Division nominee for the second consecutive year. 
The 25 year old was part of a Lions team that led the league in both total offense as well as total rushing yards. They also tied with sacks allowed. Most outstanding offensive lineman is from the BC Lions, Jovan Olaf Oyaye. It means a lot. Um, it, it, just, it, it just like, uh, I can't believe it. It's, it's crazy. Um, I feel like I should have won last year, but I didn't. But this year, thank God I could take it home. And, man, it just tells uh, how good the coaching staff is for the BC Lions and how good my team is. It's really a team reflection. One of my goals coming into this year was to win a great cup. Unfortunately not, but me winning this most outstanding alignment award means a lot. Still to come, we'll take a look at the very best from Canadian college football. And we'll find out who was the most outstanding defensive player in the CFL this season. Next. Gibson's Finest CFL Player Awards are brought to you by Gibson's Finest. After three years, it's whiskey. After 12 years, it's Gibson's Finest. Please enjoy responsibly. $100,000 for charity. The best players in CIS football were honored at the Gibson's Finest CFL Awards. The JP Metris Trophy for the outstanding down lineman went to McMaster's Ben D'Aguilar. Laval's Frederick Plessius took home the President's Trophy, awarded to the nation's Defensive Player of the Year. Shaquille Johnson of the Gill won the Peter Gorman Trophy as the best rookie player in the CIS. And finally, the Heck Crichton Trophy for the Player of the Year came down to three quarterbacks and one running back. And the Heck Crichton Trophy for the most outstanding player in the CIS football goes to, surprise, surprise, Cal Quinlan. This year's Tom Pate Award recipient is Montreal Alouettes receiver Brian Bratton. Bratton is involved in many community events, always willing to give time to those in need. He volunteers time at a local Montreal children's hospital. He helped serve food to the needy on Thanksgiving. And he also helped organize a local toy drive for families in need at Christmas time. Bratton is a perfect example of an athlete giving back to his community. When I was in college, uh, I, I began a relationship with Michael Vick. And uh, he was rookie year. And he told me that you can do it. That's basically what he said. You want to play at this level, you can do it. And from then on, I realized that kids need to learn and, and hear from others, especially professional players, that they can do whatever they want. Whether it's be an athlete, a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it is, uh, they need to learn that they're capable and that we're just like them. And so I've taken it upon myself to be that guy to so many other kids, so many other young adults to tell them they can do whatever they want. Ticats receiver and return man Chris Williams is quickly becoming one of the most exciting players in the CFL. Chris Williams, boy, is he an edge of your seat athlete. This season, Williams tied a CFL record with five punt return touchdowns. He also returned one missed field goal for a major, setting a new league record six kick return TDs. In the West, the BC Lions Tim Brown was turning heads as well. Tim Brown off and running, gone! Touchdown, BC! He finished second to Williams with 914 punt return yards. He also finished third in kickoff returns, good enough for second overall in combined return yards with 2,382. Brown also returned two punts for touchdowns. And the winner of the most outstanding special teams player of the year is... Oski Wheelie! Chris Williams! Obviously, anytime you can put a points on the board, you can change a game. But yeah, uh, it is. It's huge. Uh, it changes everything, honestly. Uh, you know, the team thinks they're going to get field position. And, you know, for you to run it back and put points on the board and, or on a missed field goal, and the team definitely thinks they're going to get points. And you run that back, it, it definitely can change the game. I was always told as a young man that if you can play the game, they will find you. And, you know, I, I'm fortunate and blessed enough to be, you know, a pretty talented football player and uh, just keep working hard and as long as you improve that game it doesn't really matter who's coming at you. Well, I don't know about you Schultze <laughs> but I'm not surprised. Were you surprised? Not really. This guy had a fabulous year. You know what though? I'm happy because I remember that play where Chris Williams did that backward thing into the end zone then he went up to Mark Tressman, head coach of the Alouettes and said say I won't do that again. I'm sorry about that. Humble kid. Great. 
He deserves it. Congratulations, Chris. Looks good on him. Yes. And Schultz, next up, we've got the defensive category and a couple special ball players. In fact, Shea Emery's been nominated in a couple of different categories, and certainly J.C. Sherritt breaking a record this year in most tackles in 17 games. He's, he's simply outstanding along with Shea Emery. Well, Shea Emery, if he's your teammate, you like him. If he's on the opposition, you don't like him. He is a true edge player. He's right on that line between professionalism and over the edge. Mm -hmm. J.C. Sherrod, he's got two R's in his name and two T's. Why? Because all his career as a five foot nine middle linebacker, he has had to try twice as hard. Willie Putz, he's on that wall of fame at Commonwealth. J.C. Sherrod, 10 years, he'll be on that wall of fame in Commonwealth. Absolutely, Schultz, and both these guys living on the edge because they are linebackers and we like them that yes. way. Let's learn more about our nominees. Big hit level there, and guess who? He makes an impact in so many ways. Montreal's Shea Emery had a career-best 87 tackles on a defense that gave up the fewest points in the East this season. The fifth-year man out of UBC also had a career-high seven sacks, tying him for fifth in the CFL. Uh, Shea Emery is one of the best linebackers in the Canadian Football League, period. The linebacker returned one interception for a touchdown in 2012. He's also nominated for Outstanding Canadian. Edmonton's J.C. Sherrod had a record-breaking year for the Eskimos in 2012. J.C. Sherrod is the all-time single-season tackle record holder. Setting a CFL single-season record with 130 tackles. Sherrod added three sacks, five interceptions, and one fumble recovery. Most outstanding defensive player goes to J.C. Sherrod. I have a little fear of public speaking. Totally forgot to thank my teammates, you know, and and I think it's it's that's a, a team award, that's a defensive award, and and that defensive line, um, they battled injuries all year long. I think we went through 16 people rotated through the defensive line, and and every guy, you know, brought brought effort every time, and they uh, they're as big a part of that, that award as anything else. You know, I've played linebacker since I was 10 years old. Um, that's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. You know, everybody's meant meant for something, and uh, I guess I'm I'm meant to tackle people. Coming up on the Gibson's Finest CFL Players Award, I will reveal who got the CFL Commissioner's Award in this year of the 100th Great Cup. And welcome everybody back to the Gibson's Finest CFL Player Awards. And Schultz, any surprises for you thus far? Well, I'm so happy for J.C. Sherrod. 130 tackles. That's like 130 mini car crashes. I mean, we've all been in car crashes. Well, okay, maybe just me. <laughs> J.C., congratulations to you. But you know what your coach is saying right now? Hey, man, you better do it again next year. Yeah. Looks good on you, J.C. All the best. And by the way, Matty, I do know what J.C. means. What's it mean? I can't tell anybody. Uh, it's that's probably a good call. Yeah. Wouldn't want that man mad at you. And Schultz, I, I, I look at what's happened and transpired so far. I love it. I yes. think all these guys are deserving. But next up, we've got a very special twist on the commissioner's award. And here to tell us all about it is our very own commissioner, Mr. Mark Cohan. Thanks, guys. This year of the 100th Grey Cup, it was really hard to decide who to give the commissioner's award to. An award to an individual or a group who has had a profound impact on football in this country. And in this year, I've decided to give it to two groups. Number one, to every player who has ever played in the CFL. The superstars, like Jackson and Moon and Flutie and Calvillo, but also the unknown players. The players who've may maybe only played one year or one down or one game. And also to their families, to their moms and dads, to the brothers and sisters, to the wives and girlfriends who've endured trades, the agony of defeat and the joy of victory. It's to the players and family, and I'm honored to give the Commissioner's Award to them. Wow! Oh, Schultz! <laughs> I think we're celebrating for a reason. Yes. I think we got... I think we, we won an award. I think we did. Yes. I like it. To, like the same feeling you get getting a game ball. Yes. We got game yes. balls. I think we should tell the commissioner, thank you on behalf of all the players who've ever played in the Canadian Football League. Next category, top Canadian. This is a special one, Schultz, because we are in Canada and we've got some outstanding players in this category. In fact, two double nominees, Shea Emery from Montreal and John Corners from Calgary. You know, Matty, I love these guys, but I also love the positions they play. Shea Emery as a middle linebacker, that is a high-profile position and a Canadian plays it. 
John Cornish, running back. You don't think there's a lot of running backs out there in high school saying, I want to be the next John Cornish. Congratulations, gentlemen. That's awesome. Absolutely. And they've set the bar high. Let's learn more about our nominees. What an afternoon for the Canadian middle linebacker. And he's got a lot of room to roll. Richmond, B.C.'s Shea Emery had a career year for the Montreal Alouettes. The product of Vancouver College and the University of British Columbia set career highs in tackles and sacks, ranking fifth in the CFL in both categories. He's looking to become the first BC native to win the award since Doug Brown in 2001. Another BC native, John Cornish, became the first Canadian to lead the league in rushing since Orville Lee did it in 1988. The new Westminster native set the new standard for rushing yards by a Canadian in one season, breaking a record that was 56 years old. Cornish also had 11 rushing TDs for the Stampeders in 2012. And the CFL most outstanding Canadian player for 2012 is John Cornish. Before I uh, really became accustomed to being the guy, yeah, I, w I wasn't really ready. And uh, I think uh, it was a maturity thing. And, for me, the, this season has been a sort of journey of, of maturity. And when I uh, look back on it now, I, I can definitely see where, you know, the things that I did that, you know, might not have been, you know, the, the best use of my time or... Sunday is the biggest award. The top Canadian is it's an individual achievement. But I'm all about team achievements. And uh, for, for us this year, I mean, this is a CFL. There's no bigger achievement than winning the Grey Cup. And especially in this year, the 100th Grey Cup. I think we have, uh, you know, a, a special team. And for us to come together and really realize our dreams of winning this, this cup, uh, it, would be, uh, it would be something I would look back on fondly for the rest of my life. Still to come, it's the beast of the East versus the best in the West. Chad Owens or John Cornish, who will be named this year's most outstanding player? We'll find out next. He is on fire. so underrated is his power, his strength. And here we are, Chris. The Gibson outstanding player. I'm telling you, this is the big one, Chris, and we've got two excellent nominees. The only two other Canadians have ever won this award. That's Tony Gabriel back in 78, and then, of course, Russ Jackson, he did it how many times, Chris? Three times. Three times, that's right. And then Chad Owens, phenomenal football season, 3,863 all-purpose yards, tremendous. You know, here's the commonality between these two players. It takes courage to play those positions. Chad Owens, returning those kicks, catching those passes, knowing he's going to get hit, that's courage. John Cornish, running back, he's got to run into the middle of the football field where all the big, mean guys are, right up the middle. That takes courage. Personalities, Matt, they're different. Big time. Chad Owens, you ask him a question, he'll look you straight in the eye, he'll give you a straight answer. John Cornish, you ask him a question, he'll pause, hesitate, and say, are you sure that's the right question to ask? <laughs> Let me ask you, think about your question before you ask it. And if you do, you can have a better question. I love John Cornish. He's great for the league, but he has a unique personality. Chad Owens, he's straightforward. Absolutely. Love these nominees. Let's learn more about him. What a season for the Argos' Chad Owens. Chad Owens never stops. And Chad Owens is off and running. And gone. Touchdown, Toronto. Chad Owens, the flying Hawaiian. Touchdown. The fourth-year man out of Hawaii led the CFL in both receiving yards and total return yards, setting a pro football record of 3,863 all-purpose yards. Owens had career highs with 94 receptions and six touchdowns for the Boatman in 2012. Calgary's John Cornish had a career year of his own. John Cornish, touchdown! What a night! He became the first Canadian to lead the league in rushing since 1988. His 1,457 rushing yards broke the great Normie Kwong's 56-year-old record for rushing yards by a Canadian. And John Cornish has done it! Cornish is looking to become the first Canadian to win the award since Tony Gabriel in 1978.
and the Gibson's finest, most outstanding CFO player for 2012, Tyler. Chad Owens. <laughs> It's just amazing. Uh, kind of really, there's no words to describe it. You know, um, he's talking about Hall of Famers. Um, you know, I said it before. I said if I could do half the things Pin's done, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be satisfied with my career. Um, but it's definitely an honor. Um, like I said, I'm happy that I can be able to represent uh, the CFL and, and the Toronto Argonauts uh, uh, the way uh, that I have this year, and been very fortunate. You know, I got great teammates. Um, definitely couldn't have uh, got this without them. So, uh, and also my family, you know, uh, they're they're my backbone. There's a reason I, why I do what I do. I'm just very happy and excited, and we got an opportunity uh, come come Sunday to to have our dream come true. And there you have it, Chris. The 2012 Gibson's Finest CFL Player Awards in the books, and what a night it was! Congratulations to all the award winners and certain the nominees. Looking forward to seeing y'all back on the football field in 2013. And now, Maddie, it's time for the 100th Grey Cup. Absolutely. We'll see y'all there. And here next is the 2012 CFL Plays of the Year. Siobhan Walker reverses field. This guy is lightning quick. Look out to the 30. It's a touchdown. It's a tackle. Shovels it ahead to Harris. Head down, fumble. Huntley has it stripped away, and it's in the end zone. Touchdown. You can't make that up. Didn't hit the ground, and it's a catch. Goes off the foot, and then off the hand of Rod Williams. He'll shoot long for Matthews. The ball, and Chris Matthews. A carry put between the legs. Catch. How did he grab it? Just dusted by a bear. That's as tough a block as we've seen this year. He gets to the corner for Coke, and it's off Phillips. What a catch! Did you see that? Well, they've been waiting five years for a return touchdown in Saskatchewan. Burris looks over the top for Curry Gray. <laughs> <laughs> yes! 